Brothers and sisters, thanks so much for being with us. I'm going to talk about fear tonight. Fear is a normal, healthy emotion. It's your brain's response to a threat. And your amygdala kicks up all these feelings that just cue you up for fight or flight. And I'm saying, you know, like any emotion, it's, it's a gift from God. So it's good. I mean, fear is why you don't run across a freeway with scissors. Right? Fear keeps you alive. But like any emotion or any primal passion, if it's not moderated by virtue, it becomes a destructive fire. And the virtue that moderates fear is fortitude. It's courage. Right? So how is, how is that like, like, like working out? I love thinking about virtues like working out, right? Well, in a couple ways. One, the more things that you do to build it up, the stronger it gets. So you've got to actually be intentional about working on these virtues. And two, if you have a strong muscle, you can lift any object with that muscle, whether it's a weight or a rock of the same weight. You could, you could pick up anything, right? And that's like courage in your fears. You might have a, a, so many different fears that you face in life. Fear of rejection, fear of preaching the gospel, uh, fear of pain, fear of death. If you build up courage and practice courage in response to any fear, you have the strength to face every fear. And that's how God wants you to live. He wants you to live free, not from the feeling of fear, but from the domination of fear. Sacred Scripture tells us that you are no longer a slave to fear. You're a child of God. Jesus probably said, be not afraid more than any other phrase in Scripture. And I can think of no better person to talk about this than our guest tonight, a man who's literally faced death, has been on over 350 combat missions, and SEAL Team 6, my friend Dom Rosso, and thank you for being with us. Dom, I love you, man. Thank you, you so too, much man. for being with us. My friend Dom Rosso, and, th and thanks again for your service, man. Yeah, man. I mean, it's uh, 350 combat missions, right? Or how many exactly? Over that. Over you that. You start to lose count. After, you do, huh? After a period of time. It, it's actually a miracle from God that you're not only here, but not limping. I mean, like, like that's, that's serious. It really is. That, that's, that's incredible. Um, because when you're in a SEAL Team 6 and you're in a combat mission, you're, you're not behind the scenes. You're in the thick of it, right? That's correct. And I think that what, what I'm in awe of and what most people are in awe of when they, when they meet someone like you, who's a, who is a true modern-day warrior, it's not, it's not what you were able to, to, to accomplish in battle. It's not that you were able to master a situation and other people. It's the mastery of yourself, right? Because it's really natural to, to face actual, the actual possibility of death, and, and a fairly high possibility, and to, to just walk through, right? That's, that's crazy. What was your dominant feeling in, in battle? Did, were you conscious of the fear? Is that something that through constant drills started to disappear over time? Like, what, what would you be feeling? Well, I think fear, obviously, is, is natural. It's a natural emotion. And like anything else, like you said in the beginning of this, it's learning how to redirect mm. and guide these emotions in our lives. Fear being a huge one of them. Mm. I think at a certain point, you recognize, you're like, oh, I have to expose myself. I always talk to people when I train with them and typically they show up to my courses because they want to get better at protecting themselves or, or have a better mindset on, right. on life in general, leadership, whatever it may be. And I start to get them to write down, I'm like, what are your biggest fears? Really? So even, even right now watching this is, what are your biggest fears? Because if we can't confront those first, if we can't dive into recognizing and being truthful with yourself, really yeah. exposing them, bring them to the surface, and I think you start to recognize throughout your career, especially in the teams, in the SEAL teams, because it exposes those so many times. You have no choice. You can't run. That's what BUDS does. BUDS exposes yeah. all your fears. It brings you out into the open, especially emotionally. So it's identifying those things and, and realizing that you need to guide that. And it is like a muscle. It is like working out. But you have to learn to redirect that fear. Mm. And I would say it never goes away. You just get really good at <laughs> redirecting it. You know, this wow. isn't necessarily that it's fear less, it's fearing less. Yeah. It's less often, right? Yeah. And not letting that control how I respond. So if it's, I it's always my, there. but It's, it's always there, but it's a liar, right? Like it's not telling you yeah. the truthful way you need to be, re be responding. And you learn that. You're like, oh, I just need to lean into this and I'm going to learn more about myself. So it, it's always there. And again, scripture, fear not, have no fear. 
it's written day after day mm. to remind us through scripture we can be fear amen okay so the people you're training by the way crush everything.com to get Dom Rosso That's training. That's the website. CrushEverything.com. Thanks. Com. Thanks for the plug. I'll, I'll, I'll plug him because he's too <laughs> humble to plug himself. No. Um, what kind of answers do people come up with when, you, when you're saying, what do you fear? And and, and also, in, in probably the same answers that people come up with in BUDS, which is the, the Navy SEAL training, right? Yeah. It, it exposes fears. What other, I'm, with, with SEALs, what other fears are coming up besides just the primordial fear of death, where yep. your brain's telling you That's leave? That's natural, yep. What else, what else surfaces? Well, it's the unknown. It's 100% the unknown. The unknown produces the most amount of fear. So if I tell you something really bad is gonna happen through one of these doors that you're gonna go through in those three doors, you're naturally gonna start having an adrenaline dump. You're like, man, something really bad is gonna happen going through that door. You have no idea what it is. And because we haven't been in that time and space before, we don't know if we have the skills and the tools to be prepared for that, right? Again, where I keep coming back to this. But without that and trying to think that we can control this ourselves, we have that emotion that tries to control our actions and control our thoughts. That's why we need to understand that redirecting them is so important, but mm. it causes you to act differently. And most of the time it's unnecessary. That's what you learn through repetition in the mm. SEAL teams is that, oh, I actually didn't need to be worried about that because it was an irrational fear. I was really? thinking about something that didn't even make sense at that point. And then you start to be able to identify. What kind of things are irrational fears that are coming up in a mission? You know, uh, we need to get into a door. This is just something that's coming right, in my right, head, right. but we have to go through a door. If I let fear control me going through that door and I hesitate and I stop and I don't let us go do what we were trained to do, mm -hmm. I can be a detriment. I can become a liability in that moment, not an asset. Which and is so a life or death thing. It's a life or death thing. Yeah. So I need to be able to conquer that to wow. do the most important thing. Wow. And there's other irrational fears too but you recognize that it's the unknown that controls that, that we need to get rid of, you know, and turn it into a healthy respect wow. of what we're getting ready to do, but not necessarily a, uh, uh, an action based off of fear. Wow. We're not gonna make a decision based off of fear. All right, so help us, help us work on the, on, the, on the virtue of actually being able to say, I'm not gonna make a decision based on what my, my amygdala is screaming at me right now. <laughs> Even in the face of life or death, what are some of the, the drills, the things that you go through? And I, I know we talked before, so I listed, I listed four things that we can maybe go off on and then whatever heck else that comes to your mind. All right, uh, so one, you've told me before, is you gotta repeat a mantra. Yeah, you do. What's that look like, and how'd you do that? Well, the counter to fear. We first need to understand what the counter is, mm. right? And so that becomes the mantra. Each individual is gonna be unique in everybody's circumstances and everybody's lifestyle. So what is that for you? What is the most powerful thing that you can replace that with? And again, fear is healthy in some aspects, mm. but not if it's controlling your actions in a negative way. Right. That's why you're changing fear to a healthy respect and allowing it to push you. You know, it's like weaponizing the fear. Mm. You're taking the fear and you're weaponizing it to be more confident, to be more focused, to make clearer decisions. Yeah. And it's all something that we need to forge. But that thing that you tell yourself right in the very moment that it happens, Neurolinguistic programming, NLP. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, you guys watching this, but neurolinguistic programming is taking a stimulus that happens in your environment. So think of something that causes fear. Uh, you're worried about walking to your car at the end of the night, or you're worried about somebody breaking into your house. Whatever the fear is, and then understanding that using that stimulus, I'm gonna change that to something that's positive. Mm. So we start small, right? Everybody, if you're working up to something that's really important to you or you, you struggle with, we start small and work from there, but you need to be able to tell yourself, well, I'm gonna get through this because I love my children and I am doing this for my nieces mm. and nephews. So that counter and that mantra starts to be born from replacing it. So that neuro-linguistic programming based off of the stimulus, which call it fear, call whatever scenario you're gonna be in, that's gonna trigger me immediately to repeat why I shouldn't fear and why I need to be stronger. I mean, think wow. about, so when you're you, training your triggers. Basically. You're training your triggers. Yeah. 100%. So you're reprogramming yourself to use the fear as a weapon and not letting it control you. Even if it feels wow. even if it feels completely overwhelming wow. at first and you think your fear is just crushing you, it doesn't need to be this sweeping change. You can literally start so small. Even if just a glimpse of what you truly love and makes mm. you more courageous pops into your head in the moment of fear, you got a good rep in. Mm. And then you build off that saying to yourself, 
Well, what is that mantra? A good rep. I like that. You got a good yeah. rep. I say that a lot. Yeah. Get good reps in. Yeah. If you get a bad rep in, do it again. Yep. And I, I, this is why God gave us his word. Yes. It's not just so you can watch a show and wait for people to preach to you. Correct. You know, it's, it's so we could latch onto phrases that we need and repeat them to ourselves until it literally becomes, I'm triggered, boom. Trigger. I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.4. 4. I yeah, just went. That's it. Yeah, that's before that verse, right? But that's one of my favorites to oh, convert. It's beautiful. That. Man. So what was your what was your scripture that you would call up in battle? In battle, I did not. This was not. You weren't there yet. This wasn't with yeah, me yet. Yeah. You know, I knew it was important to me. I knew I had a Bible with me, but I never broke it out. I didn't study scripture like I do today. Okay. Today, I recognize how much strength it brings so, to me. So you're taking that principle have. in the neurolinguistic programming, and you're applying it to the that's just the fears of everyday life and being a, yep. a good Christian. Man, that's awesome. All right, uh, second, let, letting your love overcome your fear. And I know you did this in battle. You, you'd be thinking of, of, of people. Correct. Tell me about that experience. Well, when you're facing a situation where you know your life is on the line or could be, mm -hmm. that's when in your heart and your mind you get pretty deep on like, okay, I'm getting ready to risk my life. Like, why am I doing this again? Mm -hmm. And that's where who you love and why you love them mm -hmm. needs to be right on the forefront of your mind. You need to mm -hmm. live with that because if you can't, recall that right in the moment of fear, you're gonna be a little bit behind the power curve. Mm. That's why training that and getting the rep in is so important. Mm. And for me, even at an early age, like I had, a, I had a nephew, I was blessed to have a nephew really young. I had no idea what I was doing, but I was like, cool, this is cool, I'm an uncle. But I knew that that life cycle was very important in the sense of, I have a responsibility to this younger baby that now is born and I saw the innocence, you know, my sister, had a, a baby boy, and my whole life started to transform around that idea mm. of like, I've got to go and be that shield to make sure that he gets a better life. I don't want that evil that's out in the world mm. that, that exists and that's very, very real, by the way, mm. to come home and have him have to worry about that. Mm. And that's true to today. So it's having that on my mind when I was going to kick down that door, to be like, hey, at the end of the day, I'm doing this for him. And if I have to sacrifice everything that I am for that, so be it. Worth it. It's worth it. You know, it's easier to, uh, in some ways, have that be front and center in your frontal lobe if it's life and death, mm -hmm. right? It's the daily grind where you lose that. And this is, again, why... why complacency. Yeah, complacency. It's, and, and the angels and the saints are looking at us saying, no, don't you know it's life and death? Yeah, <laughs> like, it dude, always is. Yeah, yeah. This is, the, this is the, the spiritual battlefield we find ourselves that, in. That's the weight of, of recognizing even being at the command and where I was and, and going over on these operations is that the daily grind or the complacency is actually another lie. It's, mm -hmm. it's a lie. Every moment is so precious and so purposeful. Our culture will totally blind us into thinking that that's actually not the case. The, yeah. It's insignificant. Mm. That's what the culture will teach you. But it's not true. And so we have to understand that, that living that out on a daily basis is so important and not to get caught up in it. Because if we can live with that, I recognized every piece of gear, every tactic was gonna matter every detail mattered for us to do our job, wow. everything. And if you slack off on one thing, it yeah. would come to fruition. That's our lives, it's and no different. Virtue. You yeah. just are hanging around with a bunch of people that are that intense about it. Yeah. And the more you lean into that, I can promise you, the more relaxed you actually become. It sounds overwhelming mm. to think, well, wait a minute, I'm gonna live this life where I'm intense in every moment. And it's like, to a certain extent, yes. But there's a certain calm that, that builds from that. Mm. It's like that adversity. Because you recognize that you're appreciating it and you don't wake up two years from now being like, dang it, what did I do? I did nothing. Mm. I didn't lean into that. Wow. I'd rather live with the, with the idea of knowing that I pushed into it than, than sat back and did nothing. Yeah, you know, it, it, you know it helps to own your intentions, right? Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're getting up for work, if you're suffering. When you're coming home from work, about to walk in the door, to just take a deep breath for just a second. Like, take two. That's another take trigger. Two, yeah, the yeah, right? There's a, the, I had to say this because it's important. A lot of people probably struggle with this. Yeah. That's phase two for me. No matter what day I had, there's a certain street sign that as soon as I go to that street sign, everything goes away, completely locked on, sunglasses come off, deep diaphragmatic breaths start happening. And I'm like, I am emptying myself to be completely present with my family right in this very moment. Mm. That's my trigger. Happens mm. every single time I know the exact feeling, right? That's just talking awesome, about it. Brother. But that's the type of thing that I'm talking about, about triggers to go in to make sure that you can put that <laughs> yes. fear away and be open to them. Yeah. You know? uh, way to be intentional about the right things, right? Otherwise, like we miss the whole point of life. And guys, like I gave you these kids to love. Be intentional about loving them when you walk in the door. 
Praise God. Uh, number three, the, 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 this idea that we should conquer our, our fear with a better fear. And, and I'm going to read a scripture here. It's from Matthew 10. Do not be afraid of those who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Mm -hmm. So Jesus was saying, you know, you have all these little servile fears. Right. There's things you should be afraid of you don't even think of. Right. <laughs> right? right. Think of those things. I, I think in relationships, I have a fear of conflict. I think it's natural to human beings. I sometimes can let myself be driven uh, to say, you know what, I'm going to fear losing this friendship more than my fear of conflict. And I, I can weigh these things out. Speak into that, that technique. Well, I think right away, growing my understanding of eternity. Mm. We have such a, a short and small understanding of what the eternal really is. And those, those consequences or that God's timing to our life mm. is so much deeper than we really understand. And I think that that's, to me, you talk about replace a fear with a bigger fear. Yeah. The bigger fear is, is the eternal separation from God's love, yeah. right? And separating myself from that. That's, that makes me like, whoa. Like yeah. That's deeper than yeah. going out here and getting in a life or death scuffle, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah. Because it's very real and it's very eternal. Yeah. And if we allow ourselves to think that deeply, what's in this life starts to become a little bit more superficial. Mm -hmm. And that's on the bigger scale, but I think you're right in the sense of get a rep in of what that is. Work on this smaller fear that's being an obstacle, that's being a stumbling block mm -hmm. for you. Replace it with something that's much deeper and much more meaningful and virtuous. Mm -hmm. And understanding like, whoa, I'm being called to something a little bit deeper here. This little thing that's causing me to, to slow down my action because I'm fearful of yeah. this thing, really at the end of the day, a lot of them are superficial. Mm. And it's not until you're on the other side, you're like, oh, what was I worried about? What was I worried? I, wasn't, I was worried about the wrong things. I was fearing the wrong things, you know? And, and, you know, and we're not talking about like a, a servile, cowering fear. I mean, that's not from God. No. You know, especially directed toward God. No, no, no. He, doesn't, he wants us to see him as, as, as father. You know, so the wrong kind of fear makes you cower. The right kind of fear makes you, makes you act yeah. in the right way. Uh, and then, you know, I... I Four is just how do, you, how do you engage your body in the battle with fear? You know, people talk about theology of the body, and it's always related to marital intimacy. But if you look at it from a, a broader standpoint, I mean, this is accepting the fact that God has made us body, soul composites. Yeah, 100%. And we can't just breeze over. We have physical bodies. Right. We're here. I'm here. There's a, if you hit me in the face right now, that hurts. Yeah, yeah. Right? So I have to consider That's it. what that is. And there's a neurological experience of fear that if that becomes overpowering, it's hard to think straight so as to develop the virtue necessary to enter a conflict, necessary to, uh, to, to share your faith with somebody, to, to, take a, to take a risk with your career that God's calling you to take, any of it, right? Yeah. So how do, you, how do you manage the just neurobiology of fear, your basic biological processes? What are some tips with, with breathing, with body position, whatever you, you're taught to do? So does, I'll give you two. And, and one is the, the pre-understanding scripture a little bit more, Dom, that's out there in the world that's really trying to force my will on what's going on. Mm. And I'll give you that one first. And that one is the sense of if you're afraid of something or if you knew something's holding you back, expose yourself more to what that is. So say, for instance, if you're afraid of heights, I'm going to tell you <laughs> to start working on Going into heights. Get a little higher. That's yeah, it. I yeah. mean, that is, it is that simple. If wow. you're, we have a tendency and also we have a uh, bad habit, I would say in today's modern culture, in today's world of avoidance. Mm. It's so easy to sit your butt on the couch and block that thing out and fill it with all this other distractions. You can oh, yeah. pull your phone out and just keep yourself numbs of the thing, numb of the thing. Oh, the second we're emotionally uncomfortable. And th this is why people don't even come to faith because as soon as they feel the uncomfortable question of like, why do I exist? <laughs> I'm just going to scroll on Instagram until I space and that's out. that's the key. Yeah. Knowing that the discomfort is what causes the most growth. Mm. You do not have growth without pain and discomfort, mentally, physically, or spiritually, bottom line. Mm. So that's the easier old Dom answer is to say, go expose yourself more to those environments, right? I think and that's that, a cool answer. I mean, really, it when still it comes works. to faith too. It still works. You're afraid of silence. Lean in. Lean into it. You're afraid, afraid of, of speaking. Of, get up there and speak. Yeah. Talk in front of your family. Say Start something small. To some, I, Build up the somebody. repetition. Yeah, about, about the Lord. But whatever it is you're afraid of, just go. 100%. That's still real. You can still take that 
put it in your yeah. your quiver. That doesn't have to be pre conversion right. down. That's that's awesome. It, it still carries over today, yeah. but but it was without the lacking of understanding this. And uh, my buddy Dan actually, he said something that connected it for me because most of the time today, you can go on YouTube, and what, what's going to happen is you're going to be like, I want to have a better mindset, right? I yeah. want mindset. That's the big phrase oh, it's today, huge. right? Yeah. So for me, that started to take shape in the way of like, okay, mindset, mindset, mindset. Well, what is my mind set on? Because that's going to set the mm. foundation of everything that it builds off of. Because we want to go out in the world and be fearless and engage. Well, we need to have a good mindset. Well, hold on one second. If we're faithful at all, if you even have a glimmer of hope that God's real, he loves you, he's calling you to be fearless, then before you start working on this, it's what's going on in here. Mm. And that's not necessarily tangible for people that can't really understand mm. it. But we need to fortify our spirit in order to go and engage in the battle of this world. Mm. Whether that's physically or mentally, that begins first. I can tell you that from firsthand experience. I can mm. tell you that because I've been in the physical conflict. And so when I reverse engineer my career, I realize, man, if I just had worked on my spirit, wow. be, there would have been so much more I would have been able to do and, and a much deeper clarity. And so when wow. you get into scripture, it's, it's Ephesians 6, right? It's all, it's everything. It's oh, yeah. putting on the full armor yeah. of the spirit. When I, when I wake up every day, I put my feet on the ground and I ask God to put that armor on me because I know that without a spiritual armor, I'm weak and my mindset's weak mm. and it's fickle and it's superficial and it just wants to lean into the, the secular human things that are right in oh, front yeah. of me. Oh, yeah. And then once I'm tested, it will break down. Yeah. But if I have the ability to fortify my spirit, that will then give me something to set my mind on, which will then allow you to walk into the physical world. Wow. And then apply that last principle that I told you about, about exposure. Don't avoid it. You got to expose yourself. Yeah. Exposure, exposure, exposure. Yeah. And it doesn't need to be over the top. I think that's the biggest thing that people miss too, is they think it needs to be this big elaborate thing. It's like, no, all I'm asking you to do is get a good rep in. If you're afraid of working out, you can go by yourself in the corner of the room and do one push-up. Right. Or get on your knees and right. do a push-up. Or just pr pretend to do a push-up. Yeah. Do something that's going to get you to realize that it's possible. Yeah. And then start the momentum. So, that's, that's, so there's the learning to be comfort, comfortable with the physical experience of fear and just do anyway. Yeah. And it raises the comfort level. That's incredible. No. Uh, breathing, heart rate. Real basic stuff. Totally underrated. Yeah, right? Yeah. How, how do you manage that when you feel fear? Uh, I got to give my buddy Alex a shout out here because he's a freediving national champion right Are you now. Serious? He just broke a bunch of records. He's my freediving coach. How deep does he get? Uh, he just did 307 feet somewhere. No! I think he just did that with no what's fins. His, what's his name? Uh, Alex Lanas. I'm looking that up. That's yeah, crazy. He's super cool, man. He's such a huge heart. I uh, love that L guy. Literally, probably a massive yeah, bunch. Seriously, hard. <laughs> um, also, breathing, you know, free diving. Like, I wouldn't even know Alex if it wasn't for one of my best friends, Louis Safran, which was also killed in action. I was on target mm. with him. Um, that's why I got into free diving. That's why I understand breathing. But breathing is such an underrated part of our physiology, our own human actions. We breathe every day and don't even think about it. Mm. But controlling that rhythm and understanding more about your breathing techniques, you can change in an instant. Three breaths, you can lower your heart rate, reduce your amount of adrenaline, or at least control it, and have clearer focus. Wow. Part of what I always say is weaponizing the effects of adrenaline, yeah. you know, because like whatever it is, somebody pulls out in front of you, you have to slam on the brakes, you know yeah. that feeling, right? Yeah. Now you're living with that adrenaline. Well, that's a great opportunity to get a rep in to start breathing from your diaphragm and slow it down. So without giving a whole free diving yeah. breathing lesson, yeah. I would say it's worth it for everybody to spend a little bit of time understanding how to breathe better. You do it already, be better at breathing. Mm. You can't do that enough. And your body responds right away. It's a fact, it's science, it's proven, it's just mm. shown that I can literally control my heart rate. It's part of the reason I bought a Garmin was because I consciously, when I look down, I'm like, oh, there's my heart rate. Just how do you take the proper breath? Tell take me. control. Well, you really have to like, I'm a little slouched over right now, but you really have to breathe from your belly. It's belly breathing. The diaphragm is a muscle that mm. pulls your lungs to open. And if you don't understand that, you're not consciously and visually thinking of how your body's responding, but you really want to try to take a belly breath. The best way is to put your hand on your belly and feel that belly expanding. Yeah. 
It's not up here where everybody thinks you need to breathe from your chest. It fills up slowly, almost like an hourglass, where the bottom will fill up first, then your chest. Mm. The quickest way to explain it is that you want a pretty short breath in and then a long, longer and slow exhale. So if I were to do a breath, even if you know you're getting ready to get into something or it's a stressful mm. situation, I mean, you can use this in your next meeting. You mm. can use this in, in the next situation that you think you're gonna get into. If I saw something happening that might, might be a threat or might be a tough conversation somebody's having that I wanna step in, I'm automatically gonna start my pre-breathing before I walk into that situation. Wow. I'm gonna oxygenate my body mm -hmm. to be better prepared to walk into that conversation. That's awesome. So that's a tip anybody can do and you should. So when you're taking your breath, it's a short exhalation in, longer out. It literally helps grab hold of what's going on in your brain. Even right there. Yeah. Like I'm more focused right now. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we don't talk about it enough. And so that already lowered my heart rate probably about by five to eight beats per yeah. minute. And so understanding that and dialing that in is, is really important. Also, we have a natural respiratory pause. I could get into like sniper yeah. tactics and all yeah. that stuff, but you want to break your shot in the middle, in the, at the end of that pause. So I let all my air out. We actually have a natural spot where we don't want to breathe. And we just chill there for a yeah. second. Then we start the cycle again. There's so much to breathing. It's worth mm. looking into. It's worth researching. So, so people hear things like belly breathing and mantra and they're thinking, is this a Catholic show? And I want to tie this number one and <laughs> 100%. Four, it is. four together, right? Uh, yeah. th there's a beautiful prayer that really ties this together called the Jesus Prayer. And our, our brothers and sisters in the Eastern Rite, this is a big thing for them. They, we have rosaries, but they have these hundred bead things that they wrap up their arm. Uh, but you just they're going through these beads and breathing in. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, and breathing out, have mercy on me, a sinner. And so it's, it's tying in the whole bodily experience. with Catholics, oh, I'm, Neil said, stand, incense, icons, you know. Uh, it's tying matters. it all in with the focusing your mind on the right things and all this basic stuff. Your Dude. body is a temple. Yeah. Your body is a temple, mm. and it is up to us. We have these tools and this research that allow us to be better, mm. allow us to be better vessels for God's light, yeah. to be healthy to live better standards, to have a routine, to not put junk in our bodies, mm. to know how to breathe, to hit the gym. All these are essential elements that we've really never been without, yeah. you know? And, you know, did St. Francis go, you know, bench, you know, 185 pounds and deadlift? Probably not, yeah. but I can guarantee you that he engaged in life. Yeah. He engaged into the battle. Yeah. And that's what we're being called to. We have a physical body for a reason, but yeah, you're right. I mean, it's just, uh, it's something to be aware of and practice yeah. on a daily basis. Dude, I, want, I want to honor how you, you bring this warrior spirit into your daily life. I'm honored to know you as a friend, and I've seen you, you do this as a, as a Christian man who puts yourself out there, knowing that I mean, a, lot of, a lot of the stuff you're doing with coaching and your, and your business selling uh, the Dynamis Blades, right? Or right. What, what, what's the website for that one? They're incredible They're both the same, crusheverything.com. That okay. gets you all the places. I consolidate right. everything. So. To, to just say, and I'm a devout Catholic, is like you, you put things on the line. Um, running multiple businesses you, you you do that you operate without a fear of failure absolutely and most guys don't even try things because they're afraid to fail and you you're like you know hey this business is failing bring it let's let it fail quickly yep. so i don't waste another breath on it absolutely and go on to the next thing what is god showing me in that experience yeah you it's know? the only way to live man the the failures and the pain and the adversity that we go through are gifts because mm. we get to see something we've never seen before we feel something we've never seen so <clears throat> 2 Timothy 1.7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-control. Amen. Be not afraid. And thanks for being with us, brother. Thanks. Of course, brother. Thanks for That's watching. Awesome. Man, wasn't that great? Listen, if you don't want to be happy, be sure not to subscribe. But if you want a more joyful life, the kind of life that God created you for, the kind of life Jesus promised when he said, I came to give you life to the full, then make sure you hit subscribe and share this channel with everybody you know.